Hello folks, my name is Aida Boost and once again I'm here to show you some installation magic about Autodesk software. This time it will be Autodesk Revit 2019 and the main reason to make those videos is to show and check what has changed when compared to previous versions, perhaps what new or changed options you may have, but also to give some basics for new users. So let's start. To be able to install Autodesk Revit you first need to download installation files and I'm usually recommending that you download those from Autodesk website but also if you are already Autodesk software subscriber then you can also download those from Autodesk account. Currently I have opened autodesk.com and to navigate to Autodesk Revit side or sub page I can do that in different ways. For example I can click on free trials I can then search for Revit, I can also see Revit down below, but I can also just uh, modify my web page link, including Revit in here. This is a kind of quick link. I hit enter and I'm at Revit sub page. From here I can click free trial and I can download free trial. As you see, this free trial is for 30 days, so good enough to test and see what this product is all about. So download free trial. I can see that this is available for Windows 64-bit operating system. I also can see kind of estimated maximum download size 16 gigabytes and also recommendation about internet connection. I hit next. I can then select in which way I plan to use it because currently I want to try it. So it doesn't really matter. So I select business user, then choose your language, English, and next. I have to log in to my Autodesk account. No worries, anybody can create Autodesk account. If you don't have it, you can start from here, create account. And once you have finished, you just come back to this video and do same steps again. So basically, I log in to my Autodesk account, username, next, and password, and sign in. I then may need to include company name, state province, postal code, phone and country. I hit next. Now pay attention to this screen because yes, you can straight away start to download your product. But this means that you actually download only a small amount of installation files and during installation you actually download more. Meaning that your installation itself is a bit slower and you also need good internet connection while installing the product. So I usually recommend that I download all my files first using Download Manager. So I click on this Download Manager. I then have a small product. I may already have it in my machine, but this is a small product or plugin that you install to your machine that helps to download Revit installation files but also any other Autodesk installation files. So I download this to my desktop. Then from my desktop, depending on which browser I use, I can hit run straight away. But basically I just double click on this small product. So I do an installation and uh, you can see that actually I have already downloaded Autodesk Revit before. But if you haven't, and obviously you haven't, you can simply select to where you want to download those installation files. And please keep in mind that uh, Autodesk Revit may be kind of 16 gigabytes. So you need to have enough space in your PC or on external hard drive. So for example, if I simply scroll it a bit, I can see that Autodesk Revit is already downloaded. Okay, I close this screen and then I will continue to find those files from my machine and start installation. So I will close my browser and then I open my Windows Explorer and from that location to where I actually downloaded those installation files. If you use Download Manager it's also good to see that uh, it will extract those downloaded files at the same time. So as you see my Revit 2019 is in this location. I just double click on this folder and I can see my setup.exe. I double click on this file to actually start initialization. Once this step is finished, I can see several options and I also want to pay attention to that actually from this screen, 
You can also access system requirements, also general installation help, some general readmap. So please do carefully read those before you actually start installing the product. You can also see install tools and utilities. If I click on this, I accept with the license, I hit next, and I can see what else I can actually install with my Autodesk Revit. Those are additional components depending how you want to use your Autodesk Revit. So in current case, I don't actually care of those. So I just hit back, back again. I can also create a deployment, which means that uh, if I plan to install Autodesk Revit into several machines, then it will be easier to generate a deployment and then just uh, hit install and forget, meaning that um, all installation selections are pre-made and installation in that sense is more quicker. Anyway, I pay my attention to this install button. I do a left click. Then I can see a screen about license agreement. So I need to read this carefully. Then I need to accept. I accept and next again. Here we go. From this screen, I can actually select which components with my Autodesk Revit I want to install in addition or what components I actually want to include with my Autodesk Revit main installation. So let's start from top to down, meaning that I do a left click on this Autodesk Revit 2019 and from here you can actually see what will be included with your installation. So usually, especially when you want to try a product and you're not sure what to include, then my general recommendation is that please do just include everything you see here. Also connections to, for example, conceptual design package format, also connections to fabrication packages. Uh, I also want to create a desktop shortcut Discipline, I definitely want to include all, meaning that uh, I then get different toolset for architectural, construction and MEP design. I can select project path and that is basically it. So I do a left click again to close this pop-up and then I can see Autodesk Revit content libraries. Now this is important part because as you see right now my disk space is quite huge meaning that my Revit installation takes about 30 gigabytes and it is partly because by default if I do a left click on this content libraries I can see that I have pre-selected different countries content packs but obviously if I'm working in some certain region I usually don't need all of those. So currently I'm just uh, doing a left click on this English side, uh, everything will be selected and then I do a left click to deselect everything. But for testing a product, please do select at least US metric or if you need Imperial, then maybe US Imperial. Then I go below, I can see that again I do have some other selected content packs. I deselect everything and just again scrolling down to see different countries, regions as such. Okay, so I'm good here. Only US metrics selected. I can then see that my default content will be English US metric, meaning that if you do select several, then what will be your default content? So because I do have only one, then I can have only one selection in here. I then can configure additional path, but I leave those usually as they are right now. So I do a left click again and please pay attention to this number now. If I do a left click again, I can see that instead of 30 gigabytes, now my installation requirement is kind of only 7 gigabytes. That is good and that is really important to pay attention to, otherwise you may end up just a huge installation of Autodesk Revit that you actually don't need to. So I can also see that um, I will install some shared components like Autodesk Material Library 2019 and Advanced Material Library. Why it is called shared components? It means basically that different Autodesk products do use the same material library and if you install those with Autodesk Revit for example, you really don't need to install those with other Autodesk products. Then you can select installation path. I usually use a default C drive but um, 
it can be anything depending on your PC configuration, disk space, 7 gigabytes, and I hit install. As you see, my installation starts, and during installation, different components and libraries will be installed. Depending on your PC configuration and what you have already installed to your machine, this number, how many different components or programs will be installed, may be different in your case. I can see 24 in my case, and once this number turns to zero, uh, my installation will be hopefully successfully finished. So I need to wait a bit. And maybe just a small remark that uh, remember I told you that uh, you can actually install the product while downloading installation files, but uh, in that case, the workflow is exactly the same, but during installation, you basically see that before installation can start, you first need to download those specific components. And this is why you usually need to wait a bit more to be able to install Autodesk Revit. Once installation is finished, you should see similar screen and hopefully all rows or components do have a green check mark, which means that this installation was successful. If something went wrong, you should see different color, even red error messages. And those error messages usually do have error codes included. And you can quite easily Google that specific error code and to get more information why the installation was unsuccessful. Sometimes it may happen that you didn't make a restart before you actually started Autodesk Revit installation. But in my case, I can see that everything is green. And if I see launch now button down below, it means that if I click on it, I fire up my Autodesk Revit straight away. But sometimes you may need to restart your PC first, which means that you don't see launch now, but close or something else, then you just close this screen and it will ask you to restart your PC. This is common behavior when, for example, your Autodesk desktop app was updated and this component needs a restart. If I do a close right now from here, I do not have any restart message. So I can also see that I do have Revit 2019 icon on my desktop. I just do a top click on it to fire up my Autodesk Revit 2019 for the first time. When it starts, it will show up. Do you want to activate your product or subscribe? You can select if you have decided already, single user or multi-user options. You can also enter serial number if you are previous Autodesk customer, subscriber, or in my case, I just want to try it out. So I hit start a trial. Next screen comes up in where I actually see that my trial will end after 30 days. From this screen, I can also go directly to free learning sources like free guide or free workbook. I can subscribe and I can input my license number. If I close this dialog, I can access it again from top right corner, 30 days here. Yeah? So left click and for example, once 30 days are over or before that, I can do a subscription. Anyway, I close this again. I can also see that I'm logged in to my Autodesk account using the same username and password as before downloading my files. So some Autodesk Revit features do need that you are actually logged in to your account. But what you can actually see right now is a general Autodesk Revit start screen from where you can open up some sample projects or open up your previous project if you were a previous user or you can generate a new one. So if you want to see, for example, a sample project, I can quickly click on this sample architecture project and all my tools are now available. I can quickly select default 3D view to see my project in 3D. One quick change that I can immediately see in this 2019 is that uh, I have a tabbed structure, meaning that if I have opened up several views, I can see those tabs and I can quickly navigate in between those. And of course, I can close those as well. In previous version, you had to, for example, use this selection 
tree or obviously project browser set shows your project structure. So I go back to 3D view. I close this project again, startup screen. And if I want to start a new project, I use new. I select my template, meaning that I do have some pre-made selection depending on project type. Will it be architecture, construction or MEP? So I select architecture. I ensure that create new project and I hit OK. In that case, I get a new empty project to where I can start to design something. Just a quick example. Some walls and in 3D. And I can quickly tap those walls and say that, OK, you are constrained to level 2, meaning that I have currently two different levels in my project. That can be easily changed, of course. For example, instead of 4,000 millimeters, I can hit 3,000. I hit enter and my walls will be lowered down. And this was a kind of really simple example about parametric modeling set different components to know about each other. I close this project and I don't want to save this at current moment. Okay, I hope that you learned something new from this video. And if you do like to get some more, please do subscribe to my channel and you get notifications about those. Bye bye.